Welcome back to Doctrine Forensics. Today we're going to talk about unmasking culture vultures. What is a culture vulture? A person or an organization making profit using dishonorable practices from a culture they do not care for. Culture vultures include people, churches, so-called Christian TV, fake phony and false pastors, teachers, false prophets, card-carrying fake apostles, and misguided evangelists, and you can toss in those people who call themselves revivalists. If 2020 has taught us anything, it has shown us who the frauds are politically and in the pulpit. Remember when Kenneth Copeland cursed COVID-19, which did not go away, and all the false prophets on Sid Roth's It's Supernatural giving a prophetic word for 2020, of which all of them were wrong. And as if it isn't bad enough, the Bible talks about wolves in sheep's clothing, and now there's a new breed of deceivers that are devouring the biblically illiterate. This breed of wolf is young, dashing, edgy, relevant, worldly, and they mishandle the scriptures all for self vain glorious gain and wealth. Are you a culture vulture? Does this describe any hipster pastor that you know? Well, stay with us. We're going to get into unmasking the culture vultures in just a second. If a picture is worth a thousand words, then what does this picture speak to you? Look into their eyes. If the eyes are the gateway to the soul, then what do you see? I'm having a hard time believing that at the Jerusalem Council in Acts 15, that Peter, Paul, John, James, the brother of Jesus, and the other disciples would have stopped and posed for selfies and posted it on social media. Saints, if we are so easily led away by individuals steeped in today's culture, we are abandoning the faith that was once bought and paid for by Jesus himself. Jesus did not die so that we would become like the culture. He died and saved us so that we could follow him and disrupt the culture. Are you a culture vulture? I ask this question because there are so many people who love the Christian culture, but they do not love Jesus Christ. Now in this video, you might feel like we are dragging you through the mud. Well, because we are. There are times when you must show the people and not tell them. Now we don't know any of these men personally. However, here at the channel, we are fruit inspectors. The Bible says that you will know them by their fruit. Watch this and I'll come back and comment biblically on all that is being said here. Amazing. What great friends. So great to see Robert and Chris. And now we are live in the studio. We've got some friends sitting right here. Some friends, you know, you can only get them on Zoom. Some friends you can't even get on Zoom. And other friends fly in from, you know, like New York and Miami and, of course, drive down uh, the street here in L.A., the, the living legend. I just want to make sure everybody understands who is in the house tonight. We have none other than Carl Lentz, Hillsong, New York City in the house, one of my best friends. Now, right here, you have Chad Beach telling us that Carl Lentz is one of his best friends. Well, as of November the 7th, 2020, when I looked to go to YouTube to find this video, I couldn't find the video. Well, we found out that, unfortunately, Carl Lentz has uh, succumbed to moral failure uh, through adultery. So it looks like um, the fact that the video is down is that Chad is trying to put some space between him and his best friend, Carl Lentz. Glad to be here. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, wins glasses of the night. Just walked in. I was like, You're, yeah, you won. The glasses are on fire tonight. Thank you. Culture vultures, they're always concerned about how they look. Seriously, commenting on his glasses. Devon Franklin is in the house. Speaking of New York Times bestsellers. New York Times bestseller. He is an author. He is an actor. He's a director. He's a writer. He is Superman is here. But uh, he's, he's the greatest. We love you so much. Thank you for being here. You are a house favorite. Zoe loves you. So Devon Franklin is in the house. He's a New York Times bestseller, author, speaker, director, writer. He's Superman. He's the greatest. And Zoe Church loves him. 
So I'm getting to the point where I have to help you understand that Zoe Church is a platform for what you're seeing right now, which is a program to spotlight Chad Veach's book. You're the man, and you are LA's finest, so thank you for being here. And none other than board member of Zoe Church, the philosopher, the theologian himself, the man with the greatest mustache on stage tonight, Rich Wilkinson Jr. is in the house. This is nothing more than a self-centered, vainglorious circle of praise for themselves. This is an echo chamber. These guys are always lifting each other up because it's always a project, a book, a movie, or some type of project that they're working on that is above and outside of the church so that they can enrich themselves. Everybody make some noise. Pastor Rich is here. Pastor Rich, how are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling great, man. I feel like tonight what's important is that we all play our role. <laughs> and tonight I feel like I want to be the guy who sits on a couch all night in this position. It's like yeah. there's no reason for it, right, man. It's like, right. no, I just, it's, I'm being me. You know, I'm being me. And that's a big part about leadership, Chad, <laughs> is that you got to be authentic to who you are. And last but not least, Richard Wilkerson. He's a board member at Zoe Church. Now he's sitting in the install and honestly, it just comes off very effeminate. I'm sorry, I'm just not buying that. So I sit like <laughs> this. This is one of the ways that I get creative. This yeah. is one of the ways that I'm innovative. Right. Posture. And we can talk about that a little bit. Body language, people don't talk a lot about it anymore, but it's a big deal when it comes to leading people. How do you stand? How do you sit? What do you wear? All these things, yeah. I'm going to talk about it later on in this show, but I'm, I'm glad to be here, man. Thanks for having us. I, first of all, res I respect the flexibility, the fact that you can sit like that. <laughs> no, honestly, because yeah. my COVID body right now, it's actually much harder <laughs> than you can imagine. Shout out to all the COVID bodies out there. Like I'm doing that all night. Put, put it in the chat. Here. If you got a COVID bod, raise your hand. Okay. You know what's cool, Chad, being here tonight, Devon and I, we met over 10 years ago on a show where I interviewed Devon, and we haven't seen each other in a decade, and now it's like, man, we're sitting right next to each other, we're social distancing, but honestly, our spirits have never been more connected. <laughs> well, that's because birds of a feather, they flock together. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. Paul is writing his last letter to Timothy, and he gives them some great advice. He says, remind them of these things and solemnly charge them in the presence of God not to wrangle about words which is useless and leads to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. But avoid worldly and empty chatter, for it will lead to further ungodliness. And in their talk, it will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenus and Philetus, men who have gone astray from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already taken place and they upset the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his and everyone who names the name of the Lord is to abstain from wickedness. One of the most glaring things about culture vulture pastors is that they all infamously write books. They write books about the Bible yet they never use the bible when you watch them in the pulpit they have some tablet or nothing at all it's interesting how they feel and believe they can write a book about the word of god but yet themselves they never actually exegete the scripture at any given time have you ever heard the phrase that the road to hell is paved with good intentions well let's add to that the road to hell is also paved by individuals who have good intentions these people don't come off as wicked or evil. They're very polished, they're good looking, they're articulate. They are culture vultures where they've co-mingled the cares of this world with the gospel. But what's at the center of their heart is greed. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, Peter says, But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will also be false teachers among you, who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them in, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. 
Many will follow their sensualities, and because of them, the way of the truth will be maligned. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their judgment from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. Now we're going to give you a good example of a culture vulture, another clone of a clone pastor, Adam Magana, mangling scriptures and proof texting scripture. Now this was sent to me by one of the Doctrine Forensics team members. So let me ask you a question. How's your heart? The Bible says that the words that I'm speaking out are like a stethoscope to what's in my heart. What are you trying to tell me, Pastor? You're saying I'm evil because I speak bad things and I cuss sometimes? I'm not saying that at all. Now, let's go to the scripture on this point. Luke 6, 45, it says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. Luke 6, 45. So Adam Magana missed an opportunity here to speak the truth. Or is just that speaking the truth will affect his attendance. But the Bible says that if you start looking at what's coming out of your mouth, maybe, just maybe, there are some things that have gotten in there that don't belong in there anymore. So let's address that as well. Adam said that maybe something has gotten into your heart that shouldn't be there. Here's a bit of correction. Sin does not creep into your heart. It's already there. It's called a sin nature. And we will struggle with it until Jesus gives us our glorified bodies. Furthermore, Jeremiah 17, 9 says it best. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Like maybe, just maybe today's the day that you're like, I can't seem to get my words right. I keep making the same thing. I keep blabbing out about people. I keep saying things when I know I shouldn't. I leave conversations feeling convicted. I've had to pick up the phone a few times and say, I'm sorry for saying that. How many of you guys know our words determine the direction of our life? Our words can destroy. And guys, let me tell you something. Your words will reveal your heart. So this here is rehashed false teaching from Word of Faith movement that puts the emphasis that we have pure creative power with our words, and we don't. If that were the case, we would all be billionaires. So let me ask you a question. How's your heart? The Bible says that the words that I'm speaking out are like a stethoscope to what's in my heart. What are you trying to tell me? So he did speak the truth here. However, in context of this clip, it's easy to come away with no definitive direction, biblically speaking. That's what culture vulture pastors do. They leave you hopeful, yet pointless, all at the same time. Now also note the use of music in the background to raise the emotional atmosphere. This is to help him along because he's not biblically exegeting the scriptures. Mere emotional talking points is what the Bible is to culture vultures. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, Paul tells Timothy, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is the judge of the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, and with great patience and instruction, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires and will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths. The litmus test for culture vulture pastors is laid bare in two ways. One, they never discuss spiritual life and death matters such as homosexuality, abortion, how God hates same-sex marriage, and they will never discuss the reality of sin in the life of believers. They do not even care to preach contextually Romans chapter 6. The second litmus test of culture vulture pastors, it's actually on the way. It's called persecution. I think I figured out when all the fake pastors are actually going to go away. When real persecution starts, 
I wonder how fast a person can run in skinny jeans with a latte in their hands. So it's true we're living in strange times and at some point everyone will have to take a side. I shared in a Bible study that when people during the tribulation take the mark of the beast, they will not do so by accident. They will make a cognizant decision due in part to avoid suffering and persecution. And when you do not preach sound doctrine, there is no anchor for your soul. For the believer, Hebrews chapter 16 verses 16 through 20 delivers one of the most profound texts in the word of God that should comfort all true believers. It reads, people swear by someone greater than themselves and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Because God wanted to make the unchangeable nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of this hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. Now we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It, hope he's talking about, enters in the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So the standard has been set by the Lord Jesus himself. He himself became a servant and is serving as the high priest and soon coming king of the universe. Now as for these people, if my eyes and ears and discernment are not deceiving me, they do not fit the bill. They are no Timothy, that's for sure. Culture vultures, this breed of wolves is young, dashing, edgy, relevant, worldly, and mishandle the scriptures all for self and glorious gain and wealth. Now, sadly, I can keep going here, but I think this is enough for today. But I am going to leave you with a bonus clip here of Stephen Furtick and all the foolishness that continue to go on at Elevation Church. Watch this. There it is. see you on Instagram, the walk on water challenge. Put it on Instagram. I'm going to be checking all day long. I want to see you walking on water. I want to see you walking on water in your living room. I want to see you walking on water in your backyard. If you go to the pool, make sure you take a float because it's a metaphor, but I want to see you walking on water. Somebody said, hit the recap. All right. The scripture says, come and see the breathtaking wonders of our God. For he brings both ruins and revivals. He's, he's the one who makes conflicts, conflicts Amen. in throughout the earth. Thank you, Jesus. That was it. <laughs> oh, goodness. This is my mind is not working. This is actually the worst thing. Oh my God, I can't talk. I, Dude, I literally don't even know where we are. I don't know what to do. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. I'm not even going to announce. No I, one heard I it, so I'm not going to say it. Mouth. No one heard it in the mic. I'm not going to say it. Okay. We're, we're supposed to throw okay, to guys, something? Make sure you're sharing. Please share. Okay, and we're, yep. we are about to jump into Rhythm Night yep. right now. Yep. Share. I love you guys. I hope I see you. I hope I live this. Okay, yeah, so we got to go. Maiden, I got to go. Bye. Bye, Bye y'all. What's up, What's Elevation up, Youth? Elevation hey. Youth, yeah. Joe. Come on, welcome, welcome to, Rhythm to Rhythm Night. Rhythm Night. Woo 
Let's go. Heck yeah. How's everyone doing? Put it in the chat. Scale of one to ten. How's your week been so far? If it's anything less than a five, I can guarantee it's going to go up it's gonna go after up. tonight. It's going up tonight. I guarantee it. Come on. Yes. Well, hey, y'all. My name is Brandon Hosteller, and I'm the youth director at Elevation Be Roanoke. Shout out to Roanoke Campus right now doing a watch party. Let's go. Come on. Hey, my name is uh, John. And uh, Brandon, I'm so glad that we get to be up here together, yeah, bro. It's awesome. It's you, great. Mm. And uh, we're going to have fun tonight. That's We've right. We've got a fun night plan. We've got, you know, hot wings that were going on backstage. Pray for and, Leighton and May, okay? Pray yeah. for May and put the prayer hands in the chat. I'm not I'm not Ooh. good with spicy things, but I do like Takis. That's my, like, go-to hot Oh, I see Jordan snack, Holiday so. dropped a 10. Uh, that's okay. because Elevation Rhythm is popping off with the release of Walk that's on right. Water. Ooh. She's happy. She's there excited. We go. Uh, Yelly Ruiz is a seven. There is a Whitney uh, is a 10. Shout out to Whitney. Tell us your routine. Uh, Gina McCauley. Shout out Gina is a seven. That's great. Yeah. Uh, pastor Tim is praying for Mayton. What a great <laughs> youth pastor how are we you, have. How are you with spicy things? Are you horrible. okay? Would you do better than that? No. no? I, would do, right. I would do it for the youth, but it would be painful and horrible, and yeah. I would hate it. That's Similar me, to those I'd guys. I'd be on bed rest the rest you of the week. You hate it? I'm not good, but I do, I do like spicy things. I'm just not good with it. Michaela Rose in the chat just yelled talking. Okay, Sweet. Takis is where Great. it's at. I'm just good with Takis. That's awesome. my go-to snack. Yeah. What's your go-to snack? Like if I'm chilling gaming games on something. a Friday yeah, night, yeah. I'll get a 19 count bagel bites and okay. just go crazy. Yeah, you put them on your fingers and like. Nope. No. <laughs> do you, do, you that? do that? That's a thing. You, <laughs> know, you put them on your finger and you eat them, right? So, right? I don't know. What's your go-to snack? Put it in there. Uh, I Bethany not, says I that she do learns it. the walk on water dance. Well, we want to see it, Bethany. So do it. Record Yo, tag elevation. I did too. Y'all ready rhythm. to see it? No, I'm just kidding. I, That's not even the first step. I can't um, do it. Okay, let's see. Uh, Danica, she's an eight. Man, shout I'm out Danica. Nico, we're so glad uh, that you are here. Well, Brandon, uh, tonight is the last night of the Divine yeah. Volume. Yep. And okay. if you guys don't know, um, we've been really trying to discover like what, like God is an invisible God, but we can see him sometimes yeah. in the way that he moves and we can't see him other times. Yeah. And what does it mean? And and, and and the divine volume is just an amazing opportunity. We've been surprised by the Holy Ghost at different times. Yeah, um, that's right. Like the Holy the, Ghost has shown up yeah. in person sometimes. And, yeah. you know, occasionally we'll give away some giveaways and right. some things. So if you see the Holy we've Ghost, we've had amazing times of worship. We've yeah. had amazing worship. Word. We've had videos that are discovering the supernatural. We yeah. shout out Real Talk on YouTube. And oh my gosh, <laughs> the church mints is where Brandon, it's at. Yeah. The Holy Ghost has arrived. The Holy Ghost is here. Hey, the Holy Ghost is always here. No, seriously. Oh my gosh, the Holy Ghost is here. Hey, John, when they said Terrifying. they were going to go big for this final week of the Divine Volume, I didn't realize how big they were actually talking about. Yeah. But if this is the Holy Ghost, that means we've got a giveaway that That's we right. need to do. That's right. Big ghost means big giveaway. All right. we're going I like it. Big. I'm down with it. We're I'm going down with big it. This week. So okay. what we're gonna do, not only are we just giving a couple things away, what we're gonna do this week, John, yes. Talk we're to gonna me. give away one of every single youth merch item on the store to somebody, right now. Oh, somebody on chat right on now. On the chat. Oh my so goodness. This is one of the way you need to engage hey, in the you, chat. You get you to need pick to put bro. it in there. So we're gonna give away one of everything and we're just going to get a random stop oh my goodness it's scrolling so she fast pick, I, don't, bro. I don't know what to do you uh, pick. uh there's a guy
These people certainly have a passion for the Christian culture. The question remains is, do they really love Jesus Christ? Now, only God knows that. But I'll tell you, we certainly feel terribly uneasy about what we're seeing. It doesn't agree with our spirit. Does it agree with yours? I want to thank you for listening to Doctrine Forensics. If you like this material, please click, like, subscribe, comment, and share. God bless you and your family.